A lot of scholars think that this is the house that Peter's mother-in-law lived in. And now I know that my mother-in-law, she loves Jesus, but she's not gonna be happy if someone digs a hole in her roof. I don't care who they are or what they're doing, okay? I'd love for you guys to think about something crazy that you've done with your friends. A lot of you are picturing police sirens and noises and stuff from your past, okay? Nothing illegal that you've done with your friends, but just something crazy. And you know how it works. You get together with your friends and all of a sudden somebody throws out an idea and then somebody just builds on it and it keeps getting more and more crazy, more and more absurd to where this thing kind of gets out of control. And I can picture these friends as they, as they uh, were approaching and they get there with their friend on the mat to see Jesus and there's just disappointment because they can't get their friend to Jesus. And then so they're thinking and they're like, man, how are we gonna get our friend healed? And a guy looks over there, one of the friends, and he sees a sledgehammer. He's like, I'll tell you what, guys, guess what? I found a sledgehammer. And then another dude looks over another place and he goes, he goes guys, check this out, a sawzall. And then another dude goes running off and he brings a ladder back and he's like, guys, I just found a ladder. And it just keeps on getting more and more absurd. And then all of a sudden there's this moment where these guys are all actually on the roof. And the dude with the sledgehammer is like, are we gonna do this thing? And he takes the sledgehammer and he nails it. And he makes the first smash into the roof. I mean, this is crazy stuff that these guys are doing. And I don't think that these guys had this thought of like, okay, after this, how are we gonna fix the roof for this lady? What are we gonna do there? I don't think they had a thought of like, hey, what if a large piece of clay falls and hits Jesus in the head and he gets knocked out? What should we do then? Or they didn't think through like, what if Peter's mother-in-law comes chasing us with a frying pan? How are we gonna get off this roof before she kills us or whatever? They just were consumed with the thought of, we have to get our friend to Jesus. I asked you to look for kingdom people and religious people in this event. And these friends, they're obviously the kingdom people. Kingdom people, they bring their friends to Jesus and they allow nothing to stand in the way. On the other hand, religious people, they're selective in who they bring to Jesus. Religious people make decisions for other people in their life. And that religious people say things like, well, she, she wouldn't be interested in talking about Jesus, and so I'm not gonna bring that up with her. Religious people say, well, he wouldn't come if I invited him to church, so I'm not even gonna bother and invite him. I was thinking about the Pharisees this past week, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't think of one example where the Pharisees brought somebody to Jesus wanting to introduce them to Jesus in a positive way. Religious people don't bring people to Jesus. But kingdom people, instead of making decisions for others, they have faith in how Jesus will respond and so they bring people to Jesus because kingdom people are desperate to bring others to Jesus. 